Hey everyone, welcome back to Bakel TCG. Today we're going to be doing a day two meta wrap up of the calling Las Vegas. We started with a top eight that had five chain, two prism, and one dash, right? So this is even more chain than we expected. Uh, we had two chain mirrors, so we knew chain was going to be uh, at least twice in the semis. And then we unfortunately had two of the non chain decks playing against each other with a prism and a dash. A matchup and then we had prism uh, losing to chain here you can see our semis uh, here were another chain mirror and then prism and chain just kind of looking at the players real quick these were our players we had Joe Colon on chain Dante Del Fischio on chain Sebastian Cavallo on chain Tyler Horsepool on prism Alberto Miracle on dash Andres Perez on chain Kyler War Wapple on prism and Zachary Burrell on chain um, all their deck lists are below this post, and so I will make, or once again, just like last video for day one meta breakdown, we will have all of uh, the links to these Twitter posts in the con in the description of this video. Um, so you will be able to look at all these lists. Uh, you're gonna want to keep an eye out on some of the the non-chain ones as we go through this video. Um, just a look at two of the quarterfinals matches. You know, we had uh, Chain beating the Prism here. Um, with Dante, who was going in second in this top eight and putting in a great performance all weekend. Um, we also had uh, Tyler Horsepool beating out Dash um, on a matchup that felt, you know, close but kind of dominant. <laughs> Not really. It, it was th Tyler had a very dominant play all weekend on this very controlly, like pretty much max control prism. Uh, semis, we had the Mirror and uh, Sebastian Cavallo was able to take down Dante here, um, second playing third in the chain mirror. Uh, this was a pretty close match, as you can see, two life to one life. So if you want to know how to play a chain mirror, I would go back and watch this match. Uh, it was definitely a really close chain mirror match here. And then um, we had uh, Tyler Horsepool beating Zachary uh, in the other semis. There was an unfortunate judge call in this match um, in which Herald of Judgment attacked uh, Urser, and the on-hit trigger, the judges say, went off, um, making it so he can't play from his banish, which is just not correct. That just is not how it works. Uh, there were, from what I was told, a few sloppy judge calls. We don't have an official, really, judge program, and most of the judges... Uh, I, I, I at least heard a few poor judge calls throughout this weekend, so hoping we get better judge calls from now on. I wish they had taken the extra five minutes, went and read the comprehensive rules. I would have been fine. I know it was live coverage, but it changed a lot of the game. Um, he couldn't, he took like a bunch of damage and couldn't play from his, his banish zone that turn. So that was a little rough, but, uh, still congrats to Tyler to making it to finals. And then Tyler ended up taking it, um, kind of to everyone's surprise. Prism had a horrible conversion rate. Uh, in the Road to Nat season, she was just putting up really bad numbers the whole season, and uh, kind of everyone just thought Chain would take it. I mean, obviously Chain did amazing in terms of conversion rate in this in this uh, calling, and I still think Chain was the best deck this calling by like a large margin. Chain was the best deck, um, but Tyler showed he was on coverage maybe four or five matches. Like he was on coverage more than any other player this event, and uh, he just crushed it. He's played Chain eight times and beat them seven times, so it definitely definitely seems like Control Prism has a has a solid chain matchup um, and maybe the uh, I mean I we all thought chain was going to be weaker after Tales of Aria but people might be already switching to Control Prism um, so congrats to Tyler Horsepool for winning the event on Control Prism beating chain uh, in a really uh, interesting match to see where he, he basically plays full fatigue here and barely attacks the whole match this is him winning Congrats. This will have his list here. I definitely want to try it out. I played Control Katsu a bunch and really enjoyed it, but I think Control Katsu has a really bad chain matchup, as I think most Katsu players would agree. Um, and so maybe I'll like Control Prism. I might try it out. We will see. Uh, I just want to go over the numbers again real quick. Um, let me see if we have the numbers right. That is not the right numbers I wanted here. So we are going to look at, scroll way down, um, and we are going to look at the numbers uh, for day one breakdown. Okay, this is what I wanted here. So this is just kind of my story of how strong Chain was. It was a mix of likely Chain 
had a lot of really powerful players on him, really good players, um, but also just how good Chain is. Because just having strong players pick up the deck alone is not going to make the conversion rates this insane, right? So day one, Chain was 22% of the meta. 22% of the meta, day one. Smaller than we expected, right? Day day two, Chain was 45% of the meta, right? He doubled his meta representation on day two. That's already kind of absurd. In the top eight, he was 63% of the top eight, right? So if he kept up his day two conversion rate, he should have been three of the top eight, right? Maybe four, which not four would have been 50%, right? So he should have been three or four, maybe four, but he was five, right? So his conversion rate was just absurd throughout the weekend, starting at 22%, right? If if any if everything goes quote unquote as planned, the conversion rates stay the same throughout the whole event, right? Other than the top eight, obviously you can't have every deck many top eight, right? But um, you know, he should have been two in the top eight, right? If you read this data <laughs> correctly, there should have been two chains in the top eight, but we had five in the end, and we had 45% of the day two field. So it still shows chain is by and large the best deck in the meta. Um, we already knew that, but we didn't. I, I don't know if I, I fully grasp. I don't think a lot of people fully grasp how good he is compared to the average deck. The other thing we we found out is that uh, it turns out Prism is very good. Um, we all thought she was bad. I thought she was bad. I was wrong. Uh, I think she just needed to go full control, right? It's not gonna. Okay, actually, I can kind of show off the list. Um, I think she just needed to really fully go control here. Uh, three sigil of solace three things sink below three faith for scene basically this is just full aura prism three snags in there three impenetrable beliefs um playing the three arclight sentinels when they interviewed him after he said he basically gets to play six snag because arclight sentinel is extra snags and that card is just dirty against uh chain and this deck seems to consistently not die to chain it, it it doesn't want to take a lot of decks have adopt has a have adapted like for example katsu that i play um you don't want to be on control katsu anymore because he can't out fatigue chain chain just does enough damage and katsu can't get through that can't, can't block that much right so people have been switching to aggro katsu and trying to get in kill chain before chain can get to soul shackle five right or four apparently tyler understood that prism can block that much um and he was consistently like i think in the final match he was on soul shackle five or six and at 34 life or 40 something life like he was just not taking damage he was straight up like phantasmal footsteps might be the best one of the best equipment in the game he could pitch he could play you activate his null rune and use phantasmal footsteps and just block like incredible amounts of damage like phantasmal footsteps put in probably more work in in this tournament than any other piece of equipment i mean okay carry and husk did too but phantasmal footsteps did some dirty things and uh in combination when he had his normal gloves out he just really like i said he went seven and one against chain so very very good matchup um we can see that uh, it looks like prism and chain are going to be the dominant decks for the, the next two weeks i guess and uh yeah two weeks until Tales of Aria comes out, but for now it looks like Chain still best deck. We knew that Prism surprisingly second best deck? Question mark. Um, I mean, one event's not enough to tell for sure, but she did very well. Tyler definitely is the breakout player. I would love to interview him. I would love to uh, talk to him. You know, he's he's showed just how amazing he was. He was four or five, you know, live performances, and he just knocked it out of the park almost every time. So. Prism, probably the breakout deck. Chain, we knew it was good. Maybe not this good. Katsu uh, did pretty bad. And uh, Bravo did about, about what expected. And then the rest of the field, Dash did maybe a little worse than expected. Katsu did a little worse than expected. Bravo did about as expected. Prism did a better than expected. And maybe Chain did a little better than expected. I'm not sure. And then the rest of the decks, not sure if I would consider viable, per se. Bolton's viable. But like these... Zorinthia, Viscera, Azalea, Reinar, Levia, Kano. They have, okay, I mean, they're good. Like, you can win events with them. But I would have been surprised to see any of those win, win this calling, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, that is the day two meta wrap, wrap up. Uh, congrats on to Tyler Horsepool again. Um, very amazing gameplay. Congrats to all the players in the top eight. Chain is still a great deck. I would pick him up if you want to win some CC events in the next few weeks. Um, but, 
if you're gonna buy cards right now, maybe actually hold off because Tale of Varia is coming out and it's gonna shake up the meta. Uh, I do think Control Prism has a really good matchup against the Ice decks, um, and if Ice decks are gonna be coming in and becoming popular because they have a good matchup against Chain, I think Control Prism is a safe deck to pick up right now. Um, Frostbite tokens go away at end of turn. She can just pass and then aura on the opponent's turn. When Frostbite tokens dis are destroyed, they count for Morseful Retribution to ping your opponent. She just like doesn't really care about Frostbite tokens too much at all. Um, and I think that's just something that's going to go to her advantage still. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the, me the meta slowing down. She can go really wide and, for example, old him just can't stop an opponent from going that wide. So... I don't know. I think she'll still have a lot of legs, even if Chain's getting worse. I think you're still gonna want to have a control prism in your in your you know arsenal of decks you can play. And I think I might pick her up and at least practice her a little as well. Once again, GG to everyone that played. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell, comment if you want to see anything next. Um, gonna probably do a meta wrap up soon. Uh, these were kind of mini meta wrap ups of just this event, but it'd be nice to do a meta wrap up overall. There's a lot of great statistics from Tower Number Nine. If you haven't, go check out his stuff. Um, but yeah, great event, great coverage. Thanks everyone, and uh, see you next time.